I like cooking. Subscribe to all that. You already know what time it is. It's Netflix time. This movie's called Madame Claude. In Paris back in the 1960s, Madame Claude's influence extends beyond the world of sex work until an affluent young woman threatens to change everything. So it's a French style drama that just came out. It's about an hour and 15, 52 minutes long. Spoiler alert. Let's get it. Here we have Madame Claude. And let's just be frank with it. She runs a gang of hookers. A respectable brothel, if you will. <laughs> Well, they all just having fun and whatnot. And a new recruit comes into play by the name of Sydney. Now, she's new to the crew, but something tells me she's got veteran status. Miss Claude was to check her out, and then she puts her on a trial run. So she's giving this one dude the business and getting her cheese. And then he shares his approval, letting Miss Claude know that Sydney is ex exceptional. Extraordinary with the mattress mambo. Well, after that, she goes to see her family. There's a mom and a daughter. She left them to go to Paris to pursue her, uh... Her profession. You can tell her daughter is none too pleased about what her mom does for a living. Well, after all that, back to work. Now here we have Virginia. She's one of their best girls. I mean, she will be once she gets the proper training. While Claude's helping out Virginia, Sydney pops in. And trust me, she knows how to get to the niggas with the most money. Which is obviously something Miss Claude could get with right away. She tries to take Miss Claude out for a drink. She's like, I don't drink. I'm too busy. She's like, man, come on, you coming out with me. Then we get a flashback of Miss Claude when she was young smashing some dude. Some dude was beating up on another girl, the girl next door, and then she jumped in and started smacking him with a hammer. And this is Joe. He came to finish his ass off. So in present time, they end up going to this nightclub that Joe now owns. And he knows some extortionists and some bank people and some crook crooked cops. So yeah, Joe bought that life. Now it's word about some powerful guy named Makovich talking about some pictures floating around. Why it's important to her is because of what it's one of her former, former girls that used to work with her or whatever. That's happened to be inside those photos. Joe said, we don't know nothing. The cops come by, we ain't got nothing to report. She gets him his cheese, and we keep the night rolling. Joe already has an infatuation with Sydney. You already know what it is. Sydney plays wingman when she sees somebody staring at Claude. I can't remember his name. Let's just call him Mike. They start dancing. She's the type that never falls in love. She's got a hard exterior and whatnot. But nevertheless, they do get it cracking. Next day, she takes her daughter shopping, buying her clothes and stuff, but she doesn't even seem amused by any of this. She buys her purse too, but like I said, daughter doesn't look like she wants anything to do with her mom at this point. So she scolds her daughter for being ungrateful. Her daughter's like, man, look, I don't need nothing from you. I don't know where that money comes from. And then on top of that, she's got Virginia in the background walking with one of her strippers. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, after she drops her off, she's like, you're not going to take your bag? She's like, man, I don't want to be like you. And then dips off. After that, she meets up with an associate who just happens to be a cop. She's keeping tabs on stuff, making sure certain people are safe. And she wants her to take care of a few things. He's still trying to get leads on the Makovich affair, but she's playing dumb like she don't know nothing. Then after that, back to work. She started zapping out on one of her girls because they went to the wrong client. And her girl Sydney comes through to save the day. Meanwhile, Mike and Claude are getting closer. After Sydney saves the day, she starts throwing up. I'm like, damn, is she pregnant? She tells her it's character building because she was quick to respond and save the day. On this particular day, all the girls are getting lined up to meet a celebrity because they about to get their big come up. Yeah, they're all shocked when they see Marlon Brando. Like, yeah. Now, back then, he was regarded as one of the greatest actors in the 20th century. He's had movies like The Godfather 1 and 2, Apocalypse Now, A Streetcar Named Desire, Last Tango in Paris, the first Superman movie back in 1978, The Formula, Bedtime Story, On the Waterfront, Trust me, everybody I talked to that grew up on him was like, yeah, he was fire at that time. Not exactly sure what he was doing in Paris at that time, though. So Mike and Claudia are chilling. Mom knocks at the door. He, she goes to tell her, like, look, tell her I'm not here. Her mom gave Mike some keys, and you could hear her calling her a whore in the background. So clearly nobody in her family agrees with her profession. So she's trying on clothes, getting frustrated and shit. She gets a phone call from police chief, and they sorted out the situation. And he's like, hey, don't forget the information on Markovich and check out the news. Back at the club, Joe and Sydney really are feeling each other on the low. And then Mike and Claude pop up. They talk about the pictures and stuff, and then they find out the foreign minister's involved. This nigga sitting here making threats and shit, but obviously Joe's not having none of that shit. He's gotta regulate. Anyway, it's back to business with them as usual. She talking about love, but obviously she ain't trying to hear none of that shit. Next day, she calls up one of her girls, Virginia, and sends her to a client that she's really not sure about. Some client that lives up in a mansion. And she was right to be wary of this client. Later that night, she came to Miss Clark, completely battered and bruised from head to toe. They chased her around the garden, they beat on her, they had sex with her, it was old types of mayhem. The first two questions Miss Clark asked is, are you okay and did you get the money? She got fucked up pretty bad, but she did end up getting 200000 for it. And then she tends to her wounds. Man, that shit is fucking crazy, yo. Then she gets a call from the cop. Turns out the body that Mark Anthony got, he got indicted for because the idiot left it in the wrong mattress. I'm like, wow. He called to give her a heads up because he knows there's going to be repercussions for this shit. Two years later, I guess Sydney actually meets this guy. Mike is still with Claudia. Sydney getting chicks. But really, she getting her for JoJo. Yeah, they get it popping like that out here in these streets. So after these two years, a couple people moved up in rank. And now she's got to work with this guy. Now she's got to send girls in for dudes to get these niggas yammed up. Basically, so the FBI can whack them. 
So they sent Shorty in, the guy they're trying to get likes tying up chicks. Right before he did anything, they got his ass. Yeah, she knows the public is real dangerous, but you know, she still got to work with them. So anyway, she gets back to the spot. And this guy comes in with diplomatic immunity. So we find out this guy is actually Sydney's dad. And just off conversation alone, she's thinking this motherfucker's about to be a problem. She tells her bodyguards if he even flinches the wrong way, throw this motherfucker out. She makes a phone call to Mike who's um, doing other things at the moment. Now, I guess at this point, they were feeling each other or she was feeling them, but considering how their relationship was, it was more so of like, you know, never get attached, no feelings or whatever like that. But apparently, she's feeling some type of weight when you don't answer the phone. The crazy thing is, he's actually smashing one of her workers, actually her lowest paid worker on top of that. She comes by spaz and thinking he's up to funny business. He reassures her that's not the case. But you know, the back of her mind, she's thinking to herself, this motherfucker here. Meanwhile, she goes back to work and Sydney's taking all her calls. So she comes to work basically tripping off Mike and then she tells Sydney like, yeah, your father showed up here last night. She's like, well, ain't too much we can do about that right now. He a diplomat. But Sydney did bring in a client. Turns out the girl she was smashing, you know what I'm saying, basically was recruiting. And on top of that, the last couple years, she been sniffing dope and doing all type of shit. So she gets it popping with this one client who damn near almost chokes her out. Luckily, she drugged him first. Otherwise, she'd have been fucked up. Meanwhile, Mike and Claude are trying to re rekindle stuff. You know, they was having their problems. While he goes to get her something to eat, she starts digging through his stuff. Like he just will leave some type of evidence or something. But what is this? Lipstick on the handkerchief? Meanwhile, after Joe closed up for the night, some shit went down. Some dude got killed. One of the girls got dragged out or whatever like that. Fortunately, she's still alive, but they found her like four hours later. I don't know if she's devastated or not or what the fuck. Sydney pops up at the claw it leaves and basically consoles Jojo. Then after that, Claude gets some time to chill with the girls. It actually feels like they're getting some downtime. But Claude's the type to always want to stay on her toes like she can never feel too happy. Because she knows her empire could collapse at any second. So in this scene, Sydney actually tells Claudia she loves her. Like as a sister and everything. But then she just chalks it up to be like, all right, you know, I'm just probably just drunk. Then they get back to the house. I feel like she's waiting on something. Apparently she has some shit, shit set up because... She's waiting on people to come to the door. Oh shit, Mike's side chick. Who works for Claudia, so basically she's everybody's side chick. And by the cuts on her face, she sent her to a client where they intentionally fucked her up. Basically letting her know, like, I run shit, not you. Now get the fuck out of my house. And here comes Mike. You have been busted. She gets what she had to say off her chest. She tells her that they love each other. And she's like, really? Get the fuck out of here. Oh, but he don't get off that easy. Her bodyguards, you know, FBI, get his ass. And they basically torture the fuck out of him. Yeah, they beat the dog shit out of him. Somewhere across town, Sydney's talking to this dude about her father. And the conversation's real intense. I'll let you watch that part yourselves. FBI man tells Claude that, uh... Marconi's out on bail, and because certain things went left, she might need protection. Sydney takes a walk down the street, sees her father in the window, and walks back the opposite way. She goes back to meet up with Jojo, and almost indirectly asks him to put a hit out on her dad. Now there's two reasons for this. One, she was raped by her dad when she was seven years old. Ugh. And two, he's interfering in the business that she got going on now, so, yeah. Later on, Claw says Virginia out to a client that's gonna be on a three-day weekend. Obviously, she has concerns. She's never been away for like three days before, especially with the clients, the clients that she takes on on top of that. Nevertheless, she drives off. Then she goes back to her spot, starts counting up money. Then she goes to meet that detective again. He tells everybody in the crew to lay low for a while because the streets is hot. Oh shit, Sydney's about to meet up with her dad face to face. It goes how you think it would go and she slams his head on the fucking table. And she goes to celebrate Christmas with the rest of the girls. Next day, Claudia goes to the office and then one of her ladies comes in. The same one that did the favor with the FBI agents. All of a sudden, she pulls out a gun and busts at Claudia like, oh shit. Claudia gets out of there because she ain't finished the job. I'm pretty sure she had ordered to do, do what she did, but considering she didn't get killed, she's probably going to get knocked off. Joe gets word of this and he's trying to figure out how to rectify the whole situation. Sydney and Claudia go on the run. She calls that FBI agent. He keeps telling her she's making enemies, but it's like, yo, do you know who she paid to kill her off? He knows, and the crazy thing is I think Sydney knows too. Yep, it was Sydney's dad. But she didn't do her job right. So you know they hunted her down and she got deaded. So at this point, Claude gotta get low. Two years later, she's on a farm in the middle of nowhere. And she gets a visit from Sydney. She asks her how things are holding up. She's like, I still got girls around the clock. I'm getting it popping still. Her boyfriend's like, man, ain't nobody paying for sex no more. Does she know that Woodstock is going on right now? So she thought it was only one way she could stop her dad. She actually reports to the police that she was raped by him when she was seven. He's like, look, I'm gonna save you a big hassle. You're not gonna win this case. It's your word against his, all this other stuff. And he's a diplomat. And you've been a hooker for I don't know how long. So she concedes to that notion, gets a pot with her boyfriend, and then later on go to a funeral. Apparently Jojo died. From what? We don't really know exactly. Two years after that, she's back in the city. They had seized most of her assets, but she's been making up revenue and money by doing a bunch of interviews. Here comes FBI man making sure that she, you know, says certain things but leaves out certain parts. She's like, I'm not stupid. I've been doing this. I know how to get this done. So she basically feeds the media a bunch of bullshit as all the girls listen in. And they talk to Sydney about the situation with Virginia. Remember when we was talking about that she was going on a three-day trip? Yeah, apparently she never came back from that shit. So Virginia got deaded when Claudia sent her out there. Crazy. 
Well, as Claude is sitting outside in the rain, she meets up with a daughter who she probably hasn't seen in all this time. She tells her she's married and she's got a baby on the way. Then she says, is it going to be a girl or a boy? She's like, hopefully it's a boy. It doesn't end up like me. Talking about she got enough problems as it is. The daughter's so disgusted, she just leaves about the car like, fuck this shit. The daughter walked away like, man, fuck it, I tried. She goes back to her spot, chills out with the girls, talks to Cindy one last time, and then dips out. And she ends up driving to the airport to go to the United States. The year's 1992. She got locked up in the United States, but because she was over there, she got way less time than she would have if she was still, still in Paris. And she was able to take some money back. How she was able to do that, I have no idea. Meanwhile, back in Paris, we see Lindsay. She made a phone call leaving a message for Claudia telling about how much she loved her more than anybody else in her life. Then all of a sudden, I think she saw, saw her draw, pa drive past. Last we see of her is her chilling by the beach, reflecting on life. Madam Claude on Netflix. Check it out. Like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. Like, these, y'all, these, these, mister. Skinny, ha, 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 